Jeffrey, the pressure this morning. Oh, my word. Holy moly. What's up, boys and girls? Brent Abel here, webtennis.com. Somehow, somehow trying to get my heart rate down to a manageable level. Um, I'm in my wife's domain here in the kitchen. Yeah. And she's, uh, she's got some business she's working. She's got some, you know, those orders are coming yeah. in, those pie baking orders. Yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm risking my life by being in her domain here where. There's a lot of know, equipment flying around, you know. Yeah. And there's, you know, the dogs are in the corner. They're trembling. Like they're going, yeah. oh, my God, I don't want to. Please don't. Please don't let me go yeah. in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. She's over there laughing. Yeah. You know, you think that's funny, man, but it's right. Man bludgeoned to death at Mission Hills <laughs> with, a, with a whisk. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like my game. It's like my singles game, you know, get death by paper cut. Uh, anyway, so what's going on out there today, everybody? Hope you guys are having a great start to a day. Uh, yep. Man, we got a good one here brewing in the desert. Um, this week, we're getting up in the high 80s, Jeff. Ooh. Um, so, uh, hey, thank Ken, thank you. Watch what you're saying. <laughs> you're live. That's right. No, I know I'm live. Barely. Um, anyway, no, we got a good, good week going ahead. Uh, 82 forecast today. I'm going to be in the grass at 10 this morning. Nice. With, uh, yeah. The great Paul Wolf and Kevin yeah. Kearney and, uh, a new member, uh, down here indoctrinate him to the grass courts. Hey, Mark, good morning. So Jeffrey, what's, uh, what's going on up there today in Napa, California? We got, uh, we've had some great weather the last few days. Um, today, uh, we got a little marine layer, but it's probably going to burn off right 10, 30, 11. I got Rich coming up today. We're going to spend oh, good. a little time uh, okay. advancing the cause. Um, and he, uh, he and a uh, uh, partner, what's his partner? Gray. Um, Jay. Jay Gray. Yeah. Uh, they uh, just got their notification. Uh, they were the number one team in North Cal this year. Boom. In the, in the 70s. So they okay. were, I think their team of the year, player of the year, the US, yeah. USTA North Cal. Well, I hope they so give you some love on that. You know, so that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, cool. they earned it. They, they get out there, you know. So anyway, so I got I to spend some time with him today. It's going to be great. Okay. Um, yeah. Good deal. Good deal. Um, today's theme is could you approach? And, I'm going to uh, say yes. I'm going well, to say yes. <laughs> well, not if, not if you're in a certain part of the court. That would be my answer 40 years ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> doesn't no, matter. Were, no, well, but it wouldn't be a question. It would be, I am approaching. Yeah, doesn't so, matter what I get. <laughs> no, no. I don't care if it's uh, a ground stroke, three inches from the baseline, it's a juicy approach opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah, me too. Here I come. Yeah. 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 Anyway, um, sorry. <laughs> well, that's okay. No. <laughs> no. We answered the question. Um, so this is a piece of advice that I got from Tom Stowe. And he gave me, I, I, and, you know, I've always thought, and before our great friend Jim McLennan passed away, we had threatened to put together a, a Tom Stowe piece based on, what did what did you learn from Tom? And and you know, Jim got way more time with Tom than I did, and he got him at a at a younger age. And really, I thought it, he was one of the few guys who really understood the Stowe method and yeah. could actually execute it. I think there were some players out there who who really understood it, could articulate it, but couldn't really demonstrate it. Mm -hmm. um, and when I got with Tom. You know, I, it was at the end of Tom's life. I mean, I was in my right. early thirties, and Tom was already. And there were days up there on that, on that junior high school court in Napa, where right. windy, and we'd have yeah. to pull him down off the fence. It was rough, but, but, um, but one of the things he 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 really got inside my head was every time you play a shot, whether it's a serve, and you're not playing serve and volley, or you're playing a ground stroke. He always said, could you get your feet organized in such a way that if you wanted to, could you approach? And a lot of it was based more on you've just hit a shot and you've unintentionally inflicted some pain over there. Yeah. 
are you in a position where you could take advantage of that and approach? And, you know, a lot of guys, I think, play ground strokes and shuffle back a step or two. And I just think that, or serve and stay back, one of the worst terms ever is it should be serve in, let's stay in, not, yeah. not serve Bali, but let's stay in. And we, we've talked about this a lot. So yeah. it's kind of what today's theme is, um, is could you approach? And I just, this point to me illustrates it where on a serve, I've just felt like maybe I've inflicted a little more pain than what I intended to do. Mm -hmm. Guys, look, before we get into the full point today, um, let me just back up a hair here. Every afternoon, I've got something for you, the Tennis Mindset Project, little tough love. If it's live, I go live at uh, 2 thirds to pre-record. I generally get it up there at 2 in the afternoon, but there will be something up there for you every afternoon. And it's short. It's generally... 10 minutes max. Um, and we just kind of work on one part of the little noggin in terms of how that can enhance your ability as a player. And one of the things is that if you've not picked up my complimentary, the 80, 20 reality video course, you got to do it. Go on over to webtennis.com, drop in a first name and email address, and you'll get access to that free video course. It's about 20 minutes long and it really helps you get organized with the 80, 20, 80% of the time on the court during a match is not playing points. It's spent between points mm -hmm. and on side change, nail that. And guess what happens? You tend to play at the top of your skill level way more often um, yeah. than if you're just unorganized in that, in that between points time. So uh, Jeffrey, let's take a look at this. Yeah. Could you approach with a big fat question mark? And this is, this is instant realization. I've actually stretched the guy out more than what I intended. And from here, it's just, all right. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. Hey, Jeff, can you be a, can you play a shot from halfway between the baseline and the service line? I mean, that's no man's land. Why would you, yeah. why would you, why would you do that? Why would you do that? Be because you're taking advantage of what you just did. I'm going to show you why. Oh, <laughs> and there you have it. <laughs> so I want you to have this mindset on every shot you play in the game. If you're not going to play serve and volley, or if you're not going to chip in charge, or if you're not going to play a, a real 100% I'm approaching as opposed to well, I'm going to play a shot and maybe I'll approach. There are, there are times when you're fully committed, 100% committed to coming in. But there are other times when you play a shot. In this case, it's a serve where you put yourself in a position, could you approach? And depending, I mean, look, the guy may ding it right back at me. Okay, well, maybe I step forward and play a volley, a transitional maybe. volley. Maybe if I've really got him out there pretty far and he is. So I'm kind of hoping, well, look, unless you crush it up the line, okay, I'll take my chances on that. Or unless yeah. you somehow roll it, yeah, there, I'll take my chances on it. So I just want everyone to be thinking serve and, serve and stay back is not the right way to think about it. It's, right. it's, it's serve and stay in and go, oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah. Oh boy. And even if you dawdle a little bit here, you still, yeah, I, you still are, I'm, I'm still thinking I'm going to just play it the open court and I'm going to yeah. make me pass. He's going to make him pass me I mean, again. I mean, middle, I, I love the fact that it was, you know, you kind of shorted the court, but middle of the ad court, there was no, no chance of the ball being called out. You didn't over, overcook it. You didn't, you, it, I mean, that's just a standard, you know, kind of uh, shorten the court a little bit, you know, chip, you know. Um, I like the fact that you were just looking and, you know, if the guy floats it a little bit, you step in, take it out of the air and do the same thing. Exactly. That's the same. No matter exactly. where you get the ball, you're going to lay it in there where you put it. Um, and I think that's, you know, the we've talked about this, you know, over and over and over over the, over the years, and that is that 
players make a huge mistake by not being aware of the damage they've inflicted or the damage they have not inflicted. They're, yeah. they're like, you got to know how much pain you have or have not inflicted. And, it, and it's a skill set. You, you got to, you know, you got to know what you've done in order to, where should I go stand next? Right. That, you know, that same, same mantra of, you know, where do I want the ball to land over there? Where should I go stand next? Well, where should I go stand next? There's a variable there. Did the ball land where you wanted it to? Is it carrying the weight of what your intention was? And then you have to read that. You have to know what's going on to, to understand the, the subtle adjustment of where I should stand next. And, yeah. and it's just, it's critical that you see that. And like, you know, I don't know what else is going on in this match that you felt like, you know, maybe the guy hasn't been doing that much damage on your serve, right? Maybe he's been laying the ball in there kind of, you know, it's been landing just past the service line without a lot of meat on it. And you felt like, you know what? I'm perfectly comfortable standing right here right now. Yeah. Well, look, and I think the other thing that you need to consider is how is your opponent handling this shot in terms of their core position? So if they're going to continue to slide to their right and not take it earlier, then that's part of the equation for me of going, let's see what I got. Okay. I've yeah. got them out there. Now I, out of my peripheral, because I'm looking at the ball, out of my peripheral, I see he's not going to take it earlier, which means that, wow, I mean, what I, again, it's a calculated guess. Yeah. That, and I can't do anything about the fact if he, if he dings this thing up the line, dude, um, let's go on the tour. I'll be happy to manage you on the tour. But... <laughs> Assuming that's not going to happen, yeah. then and, and look, I, I would have preferred if he'd actually hit the ball deeper than than just because you know what's going on. And by the yeah. way, this is match point last year of the indoors. Nice. <laughs> and so I'm in Houston. Know, this is in Houston, and I'm just thinking, God dang it, ball, get to me. Right? <laughs> get to me. I don't care if it's a half volley, I just want to shove it over there. And look, could you approach? Let's let's just stay on this on this theme. And and the answer is right here. I don't know, right. but I'm going to put myself in the position. I don't know. Yes, I could. Yes, I could. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I like don't the, know. And, I, and I, that's the and that's the that's the micro adjustment of reading your own ball, understanding what you've done to the ball yeah and and then making that again that the first adjustment is i'm gonna i'm gonna hit the serve and i'm gonna cheat the court by a couple feet i'm gonna hang out inside the baseline by a couple feet the next adjustment is oh look what i did yeah i think i'll cheat i think i'll take a little bit more real estate and That's see right. how this turns out you see how That's this right. turns out so you know you know the drill that, that we've done and that is you know when you're just rallying warming up rallying and do this, you know, in, in practice sets and, and do it when you're, you know, just, just warming up. And that is the ball player uh, practice routine where the incoming ball, you're focused on the incoming ball. You stay it, you watch it all the way to impact. And then as the ball leaves your strings, you know, the tr you're tracking your ball, you know, the flight pattern of your ball. So then, so then avert, move your eyes then to the player. And watch the player and start to learn the nuance of, oh, look, his racket's actually starting to fan as he goes to his backhand side. I know he's not going to top it. I, I know, oh, and he, oh, oh, the arm is starting to extend. Okay, he's reaching. Okay, I probably I can probably cheat my position here a little bit. You yeah, know, so, yeah. so it's a great little drill to understand the nuance of it. And then you just, you kind of, you do it naturally. You know, you understand that you don't need to watch the player that closely. You're going to pick up the signals, you know, uh, as you yep. get better yep. at the skill. Hey, um, one thing we've talked a lot about, I just thought that I'll throw this in there as a little bonus uh, today. If you learn to play and underspin backhand, if you learn the three basic, the three basics, which I think are racket prep position, more of a linear swing path, and what your body alignment through through contact, so you so you finish forward and don't go left to right if you're a right-handed player. 
But guess what? If you've got this shot, if you've got an underspin backhand, the basics, and I'm talking about a ground stroke, you now have an underspin backhand approach. Yep. You now have a volley, a backhand volley. You now have an underspin backhand drop shot. You now have, well, this is an approach, but you could play an approach. I, I mean, what is it like five or six or seven different shots that you've added to your toolbox by right. just working and perfecting, well, eh, perfecting wrong word, but let's just say mastering the three yeah. basic fundamentals of an underspin backhand. And if you're continuing to think out there, my God, I need to have a big top or groundy. There's one shot you've got out of that. Yeah. You've got one shot and that's it. I mean, yes, can you can you can you approach with a back with a topspin backhand? On certain balls you can, but you better not top it too much because it's going to sit up. Yeah. Right? Can you play a topspin backhand volley? Jeff, tell me yes or no. <laughs> it's it's rarely seen. Um, <laughs> okay. You know, it's right. it's a little bit like Bigfoot. Like, okay. Um, <laughs> You know, All right. How about you, how about how about an underspin backhand lob? Is that a possibility? Underspin backhand lob. Hmm. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, that seems. I'll a answer it for right. you. I'll yeah. answer it for you. Yes, with an exclamation point. <laughs> so, look, guys. Um, just again, a bonus little thing. There, are, there are certain fundamentals, there are certain basics in the game that when we lose, that when we use them, learn them, use them it kind of solves other problems. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, good stuff. Um, and look, guys, hope you liked today's episode of What's the Right Shot. Please like, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. And uh, look, uh, I do offer some one-on-one -on -one coaching. I know, shocking. Um, I know. I'm just not all What's the Right Shot. I'm not all in the afternoon thing. I'm not all, I'm not on the grass court all day long. Okay. I'm not in the gym all day long. I've actually, Hey Brent. <laughs> hey Brent. How do I sign up? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, well, I think it's pony express. Uh, there are yeah. ways to do it. No, the yeah. way to, the way to start the conversation, if you want some one-on-one -on -one help, either on the court or uh, video conference stuff, we do some video analysis, is shoot me an email, brent at webtennis.com. What we'll do is to start the conversation, we'll get on a free 15-minute video conference call. You describe where your game's at, where you want to take it, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to do as big a selling job as possible in terms of how I can help you bridge the gap between those two places. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you can decide right then and there, wow, this is a good fit or mm, don't think you can help me. So, um, yeah. Um, and, or email the great Jeff Jacklitz up there in Napa, California, Jeff at Jacklitz 365.com fly to, I would say Oakland might be easier. Oakland, Oakland or Sac, one of the two Sac, okay. a little farther, but, but Oakland's close, the closest. But yeah. Sacramento's a nice little homey. E air Sacramento's easy. It's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Airport is empty. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> um, so that would do that. Get yourself to Sacramento, rent a car. I don't know. Jeff might even come over and pick you up with some, you know, that 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 limousine service that you've got. Oh, yeah, yeah. The limo service. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I right. forgot the I have that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there you have it. So uh, I don't know. What else? Um I've, I'm starting to breathe now easier. I think I think Mai's left to go. Yeah, there we play go. Pickleball this morning. Um, whew, yeah. That was that was tense for a while. Yeah, but, but now there's pies all over these yeah. all over the kitchen, and <laughs> as you know, it's uh, they're pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's it for me today. Uh, hope you enjoyed today's episode of What's the Right Shot. Any comments, any questions, any remarks down below in the comments area, let me know. Love to read and respond to those. Uh, or if you want to keep the conversation private, brent at webtennis.com. Jeff, thanks for hanging out with us again today. Really, really you appreciate got it. it. That's great stuff. Um, 
Guys, as always, it's time to get out there. Let's help someone else have a spectacular day. Jeffrey, everybody else, see you again next time. See ya.